So we are just getting going on our journey across Crete. We were there for 10 days and our trip breaks up fairly neatly into four episodes, which themselves break up pretty neatly across the four prefectures of Crete. Cool, 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 cool. Now, things to catch you up on? Well, it would be much easier if you'd watch these episodes in order, you maniac! But yeah, this was actually our second time around Crete. We were there in 2017, so this is equal parts nostalgia tour and catching things we couldn't do last time. If you know Crete at all, you'd know that the next region along after Harnia from last time would be Rithymno, but we ended up in Rithymno last, and rather than having to continuously reference the discontinuity, it's just easier to keep the chronology of when we are at each, so let's not fuss. Heraklion is quite a stark side-by-side -side comparison with Harnia. The two cities are of comparable age and both with ample Venetian architecture on display, but Heraklion being the capital is considerably more urbanized. So it doesn't have the same chill that the Harnia waterfront does, but I still have a massive fondness for it. Being back, I was high as a kite with endorphins just walking the same streets again. Low angle flag shot. We got a dinky little Airbnb just a little to the west of the center, which was still pretty nice considering it was just for two nights. Unlike last time, we didn't have long here, only 48 hours, so we were right out the door to go explore. Down to the water's edge, as with Harnia, it was still unusually windy this trip, so despite the bright blue, keeping every shot still in this episode was a real challenge. These structures look like they could have been built in the 80s as just a way to expand the waterfront, but these are actually part of the Venetian defences of the town. Last time, I'd only begun to get the scale of Heraklion's fortifications, but they are intense, and they had to be. They survived a 21-year siege. Uh, but depending on what part of town you're in, weird though it sounds, you can miss them in the clusters of other buildings. This is the Venetian fort. You can see a lot of the historic waterfront, but with everything else that's going on there, from the main roads, the modern harbour, and the airport, both of which are just beyond the historic harbour, it's definitely not got the same tranquility of Harnia. Um, I'm not going to deep dive into all the Venetian stuff, as that is going to be its own series. We've been winding up to this for as long as I can remember, so if you're seeing this about six months hence, check out the channel for more of that. So we ducked inland into the streets of Heraklion. Now, I'm always gushing about how coffee in Greece is unreasonably good, to the point where I've kind of phased out recommending specific spots. Just look for the places that appear to be putting in effort, and even some of the places that don't, and you'll get something truly special. And you're never far from one of these. I am still getting those coffee island dreams every so often. So back in 2017, we were staying in an Airbnb that was fine, if not great, and just round the corner was this coffee place called Crop, which just blew my mind. When we got back to England, I couldn't stop thinking about this place, to the point that getting back there had almost become a pilgrimage. With the pandemic all kicking off, it was a nail-biter to see if businesses in tourist-heavy areas would survive, but after what felt like forever, we were back in Crete and sitting down at Crop, ordering two contrasting blends at once, one as an espresso and one on ice. Now, despite how much I bluster around coffee, I am claiming no unique expertise. There are people much more in the scene who would run rings around me in terms of knowledge and discerning palette and all that. But indulging my inner coffee snob or just being back to this amazing spot, that pretty much made my year. Next, the Heraklion Museum is the place to go for all the Minoan history. The place is amazing, definitely go there. The material culture that's on offer from a civilization more than three and a half thousand years old is breathtaking. And what's particularly nice is all the best finds are in situ here on Crete, rather than distributed to other museums across Greece or even sitting in the British Museum. This is definitely the place to go see them. So then, Yeros for dinner while hanging out with the strays in the center of Heraklion. Heraklion does quite well with being busy and vibrant without feeling like a mad crush. Though that said, I feel like the summer of 2021 was a much quieter one with where the plague was at around Europe, so it's probably more packed in other years. Sunset at the water's edge with the wind still fighting us. So, next day. Made a point to get on the road in good time. Now, the roads around Heraklion vary wildly. You've got intense motorways all the way to the tiny alleys in the city centre, which all makes the driving a bit stressful. But once you're out of the main Heraklion area, it's a breeze. Now, another place I've been dying to revisit, this is Knossos. This is where the story of rediscovering the Minoans began. 
While credit for the discovery of the site belongs to Minos Kalokarinos in 1878, before British archaeologist Arthur Evans undertook a massive dig with a crew of locals, the Minoan culture was completely lost to history. We had essentially no idea of its existence at all. Unfortunately though, Victorian archaeology was a lot less about good scholarship and the scientific method, and more about treasure hunting and showboating, so a lot of the most impressive looking parts of the site are in fact poured concrete that Evans commissioned later. All of this is going to have to wait for a bunch of Minoan dedicated episodes, which I'm getting very impatient to make. Suffice to say, Knossos is an absolutely unmissable site for anyone who's visiting Crete. It is an incredibly exciting and extensive site for a culture that disappeared over three and a half thousand years ago. Definitely go there. You do want to be there early though, as even while we were leaving around 9.30, the queues were already stacking up. It opens at 8 a.m., so that's a pretty good time to get there to beat the crowds. Another thing I was bursting with excitement to finally see was some more of the south of the island. Uh, most of the major cities are on the north coast. On the southwestern half of the island, the mountains sploosh pretty much right into the sea, leaving comparatively little room for major towns. But this does also happen on stretches of the north coast too, so I'm not entirely sure why that is. We didn't really see much of the south on our first trip in 2017, with the exception being the return leg from Samaria Gorge, so I was dead curious to see some more of it. And while some comparatively short stretches on Crete can turn into remarkably long drives thanks to narrow, precarious roads, there's this substantial highway running north to south out of Heraklion, so as soon as you've cleared the ring road, you are away. This is where we're starting to bump into problems with just doing travel episodes, as I keep dangling places only to whisk them out of sight with an, oh, I'm sorry, I believe your princess is in another castle, or Minoan palatial site in this case. But as far as our trip goes, this is compounded because the majority of what we were doing is kind of a fetch quest of various historical sites. So the way we're gonna make this work is with a quick fire round. First of all, Gortins. Perhaps surprisingly for an island overflowing with ruined Minoan sites going back 4,000 plus years, there's actually not much Roman stuff. The uh, standout is Gortins with a restored basilica and this small theatre. There's actually all sorts of ruins in the landscape all around there, but I won't deep dive into them on this episode. Now, I won't hold it against you if this site doesn't make your top 10, but it's definitely not nothing. Next, we dropped in on Phaistos. This is another of the major Minoan palatial centers, and it's really something to see for yourself. Definitely recommend this one. The views of the surrounding countryside are gorgeous. Got a decent espresso vanity shot too. Next, Aya Triada. It's another major palatial site, which is remarkably close by. Uh, it's pretty amazing. Small word of warning, the road from the north had such a severe incline, the tiny Fiat Panda we had hired nearly did a roly-poly back down the slope. There was a bit of smaller stuff we caught, like this Tholos tomb and this Byzantine church, but we wrapped up at Comos Beach. While it doesn't exactly have the show-stopping scenery of Balos and Elephanisi from last episode, it's still a stunning place to be, and not especially busy. So, I amused myself in the tunnels on the way back by zooming out as we travelled forward, giving the sensation of entering hyperspace. That was a good day. Um, evening time, and there's obviously a huge choice of restaurants in Heraklion given the size of the centre. We were trying to thread the needle of somewhere nice, but not too pricey. I'd actually forgotten about this. We'd had our jabs in the UK the instant we were physically able to, but at that point, they were still making you wait 12 weeks between your first and second, and while we tried and tried to convince the centres to let us have our second just a week early so we could travel to Crete fully vaxxed, no luck. So annoyingly, that meant that by Greek law, restaurants were having to seat us outside. I'd completely forgotten about that. That was more than a little bit of a pain, that trip. Well, this spot was pretty good. Saw some more of Heraklion at night. Uh, there's a lot more graffiti in Heraklion than other smaller places on Crete, but it's mostly done well. There's kind of a scene around it in the larger urban centres in Greece, like Athens and Thessaloniki. It's a plus from me. Rose very early the next day to catch the sunrise at the waterfront, and uh, it wasn't really worth it. Psych! It was amazing! Let's have a supercut! You have a pretty constant stream of aircraft taking off. I'm not an expert on aviation, but you can see them all bank pretty hard to the north to presumably avoid having passenger planes directly over the town all day. My camera seemed utterly incredulous. There'd be planes like, what? Surely not. Maybe it just had a short attention span. It definitely lacked focus. 
Oh, come on. You really think you've got better camera puns? Well, fine. Take a shot. So I spent the morning doing a lap of the Venetian defenses, which is no small feat. This isn't really a recommendation. It's a pretty big lap. Easily an hour if you don't stop, or more like two hours if you're actually taking it in. In parts, the walls are somewhat buried in other parts of the city, whether turned into a car park, concealed behind trees, or just blending in with other architecture that's grown up around it. So you might not want to see the full loop, but I was enjoying myself at least. Partway along made another stop at Crop, and a little later treated myself to a Fredo from Coffee Island, which is a must. Now, this will feel like a bit of an abrupt stop, but the rest of our day was involved with getting to Elunda, which is where the next episode is going to kick off. I'm not crazy about leaving all these dangling threads. Oh, there's so much more to show you from all the Minoan sites. That's at least a couple of episodes there. Then there's the Venetian stuff. You shouldn't have to wait too long for those. Well, in terms of this channel, at least. I don't know if this is apparent on screen, but these are a huge job to make. Uh, not least because all the music we make that goes behind them, uh, to, to be honest, that takes two to three times the length it takes to cut the video together. So if you want to support the channel, all of the tracks you've been hearing in the background are up on bandcamp.com. If you want to support us, that's the place to do it. We'll be back with the Alinda episode very soon, so keep an eye out for that. Otherwise, have a great one.